I could use voice if you want. I'm just at home and there may be other noises. <laughs> so I was mostly doing it by text, depending on what you prefer. Maybe I'll do text and then uh, voice. So, does anyone know when Pi Day is? Most of these are kind of funny. They're just dedicate like pies for pie, that sort of thing. So they took it in, um, oh, light at heart. In fact, the whole exploratorium, except for a couple ones, are um, they're serious subjects, but at the same time, the exploratorium is a place where people go to find out about science, and it's fun place. So you can see the one with the pies, and uh, you can see Pythagorean, Pythagorean's uh, theorem there uh, demonstrated. Oh, thank you, human. One of the reasons why the pi exhibits are in the center here is because pi is so central to our lives and to uh, not just mathematics, but to everything around us. There's so many different possible uh, ways to, uh, in our lives, uh, where pi takes a part. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here again, we want to see the, what I want to do is just to do a brief tour, and then you are most welcome to come back and explore, and uh, to come back to the island and explore. This is one of my favorite places in all of uh, Second Life anyway. So um, I'm going to wander over uh, toward the edges. Uh, and then kind of do a clockwise tour of the island. Uh, 
Uh, for you guys that now, does this work? Because be, for you guys that have been coming to Exploratorium for years, um, you'll remember some of these exhibits. Unfortunately, a couple of them don't work anymore. And I'm distressed about that. that this used to be a wonderful exhibit right here. See if somebody, see if it works, somebody try it. Uh, but this was uh, a very, can anybody guess what, if it doesn't work, can anybody guess what it did? This, the scripts, yes, but unfortunately, one of the reasons why we're visiting Exploratorium today, yeah, chain reaction. It used to actually, this is very clever, somebody programmed this, and they made multiple little uh, mouse traps <laughs> with uh, balls, and it actually works with the physics engine, and when you clicked on it, the little balls went up in the air, and then they pop. In other words, all, you, all they did was one trap. And then it would set off all the rest of the traps. And it was most interesting. Yes, kind of like chain reactions. Um, very interesting to see. Uh, now, one of the reasons we're here is because if you like some of these ideas, take pictures of them. Try to get an idea of what they did. This is not a difficult script. We could reproduce this over at uh, Science Circle. Uh, if you can find the script, in other words, get into the object itself, um, feel free. But this is not a terribly difficult uh, one to recreate. Yeah, it's a very good idea. Like I said, uh, uh, with a little bit of, since uh, there are replicates, in other words, in other words, it's just one object of multiple replicates. If you create the mousetrap itself, it's not difficult to uh, spring. I can think of a, a way to do the script. If you like this, we can uh, try to uh, do it ourselves. As I said, one of the reasons for being here is to see what marvelous uh, exhibits there are and to try to preserve them, either by copying, if possible, or to reproduce them ourselves. I'm going to go clockwise now. Uh, this one is one of the... This one is an excellent um, exhibit that was well-researched. It's not just the big building, it's the other exhibits around it. Each of these posters are part of it. And what it is, is to demonstrate what a nuclear reactor is. Uh, yeah, excellent. There you go. There's a good link and stuff. Uh, but it's a excellent way to see what a nuclear reactor is and um, both the social and physical ramifications of having nuclear reactors. This was built right after the uh, 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 catastrophic uh, earthquake and tidal wave and such in Japan. Yeah, uh, if they're in mesh, then they won't take up quite as much space, obviously. But uh, feel free to uh, look at some of the posters now and to come back to them. This is uh, an exhibit you can easily take some time at yourself. It actually, this is, uh, some of them are uh, dynamic. You can actually see what happened with the earthquakes. Okay. Um, what I will continue to do here again, this is just a brief tour so it gives you an idea of what all there is to see. Uh, this is an incredible space, uh, Exploratorium. There's much more than you can see in uh, an hour. So let's keep uh, going around. Is This is a fairly recent exhibit and it show, it's similar to the chain reaction where it shows critical mass. So this one may still work. Uh, if anybody wants to push, it says push to fire. There, somebody want to try that? Does it work? OK. 
Okay. Okay, so we'll, yeah, we'll do them in mesh, okay. But um, exhibits like this, um, here again, it's being reset. Exhibits, it doesn't seem to work the way it's supposed to anyway. Let's see. Now notice that when they say critical mass, we can always have some, um, let's see, reset, push to fire, firing, okay. There we go, okay. Now notice the it is working. Uh, what you see here is, of course, um, uh, scientifically, if you only press like 25, it the reaction is going to not progress to a critical mass. But if you have 100%, there's going to be enough of the, uh, in real life, neutrons to uh, be able to make other of the atoms uh, shed neutrons and then the whole thing will become a critical mass, much like the uh, mousetrap exhibit back earlier that we saw. Okay, here again, this is only a tour and so we're just going to go around and, and get a sampling, a, a appetizer for some of the types of marvelous uh, things there are. In fact, right behind us here, there looks like a big um, comet or, or star. I'm not sure what this is. If I click on it, I can see that it says it's a uh, new sun. Okay. It's got a lot of particle effects. But one of the exhibits here, let's go over to the far edge. I'm, I'm going over to the other sun here. Um, this exhibit over here is one of the larger exhibits on the island. And what it shows is it, it shows the, whoops, I'm wandering off into here, is what it shows is the distance between planets. You can read, it says, this is a scale model of the sun, the earth, the moon, and other planets. And uh, you can follow the light. It goes all the way across the entire um, region, the sim. They've got some marvelous um, particle effects, reproductions here. But if you follow the arrow, in fact, I think we might do that. Let's go follow the arrow and, or the little yellow arrow, and we'll see other exhibits along the way. Okay. Um, so we follow down this way. You can see, for example, the Earth and Moon uh, here. If okay, okay. This this one here along the way shows the Sun and the Moon and what a solar uh, eclipse looks like. You can see the shadows, so you can see the sun there, and then the uh, uh, shadow, the sun sets. Um, you can see the backside of the earth and its shadow. You can see how the shadow is cast on the front side of the earth and creates uh, an eclipse. Uh, here again, some very uh, clever renderings, uh, very clever uh, models here to give you a good idea about how that works. If you continue along, I'm going to continue along the uh, Sun to Planets exhibit here uh, as we go down this side of the, yes, the penumbra and umbra, exactly, good. Uh, please uh, provide the proper terminology. Um, some of these smaller ones here you may have to come back to to find, because we're not all going to fit on this. <laughs> But you may have to come back to, this is, uh, some of these are just little games you can play um, for people that uh, enjoy being here. Okay, I'm going to continue walking down this way, uh, follow where uh, Tolliver is going. Okay, honors, what do you see here? If you actually look at the panel, you'll see a tiny little dot, a tiny dot. In fact, if you didn't, yeah, probably Mahjong. Um, now, if you didn't see the text above it in red, if 
Yeah, very, very small. That's the actual size Mercury would be if the sun were the size it is back there, that, that big fiery ball that we had uh, back at the end. So Mercury, very, very tiny, also very far away. Now, if we continue down here, what are we going to fall? What are we going to see next after Mercury? Yep, okie doke. Just trying to uh, be interactive here. <laughs> so if we follow down here, don't go in the water. You may have to skirt the water here, but if we follow down this direction, we're going to be seeing Venus. Before we see Venus, there are a couple other uh, things. One is, I don't know what this bridge is. Maybe somebody goes down there and reports, tell us what's going on. It's, that's a fairly new bridge. I haven't seen that one before. Um, okay, where is Venus? Oh my goodness. Venus is down along here somewhere. I do see one of the other things out in the water. Somebody has changed the exhibit a bit. If you zoom in on it, it doesn't say, it does indeed say Venus. And Venus is kind of reddish looking, orangish, at least in this uh, depiction. Um, now Venus is bigger than Mercury. Venus is about the size of the Earth. It's all, it would be a twin if it weren't so uh, close to the sun. Um, anybody know if we can visit Venus? Well, I guess technically, like to Mars, if we wanted to go to Venus, what would we find? Yes, it has. Uh, the Russians visited there. We visited there. Oh, the bridge. Oh, to the edge of the flat Earth. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Um, some new um, boats. I have no idea whether you can get in these and drive them around uh, ourselves. Now, what else should we see here? We should also um, come to the edge of the region. Seen Venus, what should we see next? Very closely down there. You will see a couple more little tiny dots, very tiny dots that represent, and oh, hey, it's got the actual um, uh, terrain. In other words, somebody's put a texture on that little tiny dot. That's Earth. Is that the, yeah, and the moon, if you look uh, right uh, near where the text is, there's an even tinier dot. That's the Earth, and that's the actual relationship that you'd see with the moon and the Earth. It's kind of amazing that the moon and the earth just happen to be the distance they are so that we can have a total eclipse. Total eclipses, while planets are probably pretty common in the uh, uh, universe, we know that there's thousands around us, um, the distance between the moon and the earth and the idea of total eclipses is probably very, very rare because it's all, it's just coincidental that we've got the Earth at the, and the Moon at the distance it is right now. In fact, even in the future and in the past, and we won't have total eclipses anymore. One of the posts on the island, and if you look at it, you'll see some of the other things you can teleport to. Uh, there is an amphitheater. Let me see if I can get my... Um, there's a, lots and lots of different things to see here. Uh, if you look on both the back, uh, there's some freebies, exhibit landmarks, uh, such. Also, these posts are the only way to get to the uh, regions that are above the ground. Uh, one of them is on the back of the posts. Let me walk around that way so you can see it because Mars one. Um, I want to show you the other couple ones that are here and then 
I'll let everybody go. Uh, but the Mars one is around this side. It says, see an asteroid smart smash into uh, Mars. And last time I tried it, I couldn't get the asteroid to smash into Mars. But it was an incredible um, uh, exhibit uh, when the uh, script worked. It also has a, a memorial to uh, Paul Doherty. Uh, we actually held the memorial there. Okay. The big building here, let's take a look around. Um, this big building, does anyone know what the big round building is? This big round building here that's part of it. I'm going to walk around here. Okay. I uh, hope I don't lose anybody. Okay. Um, by the way, what am I standing under? Here. Anybody recognize this? Well, uh, actually, that's close. Uh, this is the comet that they landed on. This is kind of the peanut-shaped comet. I'm trying to remember what it what it's called, but it's kind of peanut shaped and they landed on it and then the little spacecraft bounced and fell under a um, into a kind of a ditch and I don't remember if they ever got any uh, information back from it but the information they got at the beginning was fantastic it's just the little thing bounced unfortunately and fell into yeah there you go okay and it's rotating around, but it was the first comet, the Rosetta, absolutely, the Rosetta one. And then, of course, uh, right now, uh, there is a um, spacecraft that is on an asteroid. It's kind of a square-looking asteroid, it's kind of funny-looking. Uh, now, the building here, what I will do is, I won't go into the building, but what this is, is this is a famous old observatory. In fact, like from when I went to secondary school or uh, high school, um, I could actually see this. This was up on a mountain above Silicon Valley. It's called Lick Observatory. It was made in back, I think, in the 1880s or sometime. And it's a very famous uh, uh, refractor telescope. That is, it's got a big lens at the end rather than the ones we have today, which are refract refractor teles or reflecting telescopes. And you can actually, by the way, you can actually move the floor of, in the model here, you can move, move the floor. If you stand up on top, you can click on it so you can move the floor so that the observer can see through the telescope. That's how it worked back then. The floor actually moves. But this is a, a model of a very old telescope in the United States called the Lick Observatory. Okay. Um, here again. Uh, let's go ahead and since it's 20 to the hour, uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the other exhibits. Um, let's see, what is this thing here? Anybody, um, this may be the asteroid. Uh, that says Comet Hartley too. Okay, so in this pavilion, this very colorful pavilion, is one of the things you can do in Second Life that you... Uh, yeah, we got to keep moving is that the one of the things you can do in Second Life that you can't always do in um, First Life and that's to show uh, These are fantastic optical illusions uh, Take a look at the ones around you. This is kind of like the Pi Day. It's got several different optical illusions the the big objects are Second Life artistry, but some of these other ones are uh, optical illusions, like the ones with the cubes. Um, so take a look around a couple of these ones here. They're very interesting, or come back, because they show what look to be like the ones here. It looks to be like those are not squares, but they actually are, things like that. It's it's very interesting. Uh, very, It's a good... Um, example of what you can create in Second Life. 
These are also replicated at the actual Exploratorium Museum in San Francisco. But it's another idea. For, for you guys that like one of these things, take a picture or remember about it because they're not, yes, Flowland was a region um, near here or connected to here that it, there was a bridge actually that went across if it's not here anymore. And it was devoted completely to mathematics and it had some marvelous um, examples. I've got pictures of that area and it had folk called pendulum. It had other types of interactive um, exhibits. And unfortunately, just like this exhibit is that, well, it may be gone, you can check. There used to be a, um, it's gone. And that's terribly unfortunate because just like the reason we're here is we need to be able to preserve this in memory. We need to be able to maybe reproduce it. Um, most of these exhibits are not, except for some of the art in here, they're not terribly difficult to reproduce or to script. It's just a matter of which do we want. Take pictures, remember them in your head. Uh, what can we do uh, to so that this doesn't go away too? What so that this is not just a memory. This needs to be uh, something uh, preserved, and we can do it ourselves if we uh, have the desire and do it. Now let's, let me, before we go up to the, um, yeah, you can make a machinima of it. Absolutely. That's even better. A video machinima so you can see the dynamic. Let's go look at the last exhibits here and then we'll go up to the Mars one. And then you guys can uh, go off on your own. Okay, so I'm headed over to these ones ahead of us. Uh, these are some of the other um, areas. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, here again, there are many of the. Um, this is devoted here to the solar eclipse back in 2017, this large um, exhibit ahead of us. And here's a, another one of the navigation posts. Now, what we'll probably do is look at the exhibit ahead and then come back to this navigation post. Find the one that says Mars. It's kind of got a. Um, asteroid uh, or a meteor crashing into Mars. It's kind of orange. Yeah, years of work. This is years of work, uh, wonderful, and ability to share science and knowledgeable people. Now, here's a large exhibit on the solar eclipse. Uh, it's uh, uh, very definitive. You can see what was going on uh, as it went across the United States. It's one of the only ones in a long time that uh, will go across the United States. Obviously, there'll be other ones across Europe and other places. It's just that for people that were in the United States, uh, this was a marvelous opportunity. Um, let's see. There, oh, yeah. <laughs> in some places, you can actually sit on some of the exhibits and see them. There's one that's a box. Oh, a ways away where you can sit on it and uh, actually see inside of it as if you were a, a part of the exhibit. Uh, here again, I um, uh, suggest everybody come back sometime and see this. I believe this sim will still be up until next April. So do that. Now, what I'm trying to find is a, there we go, ahead of us is I'm trying to find one of the navigation posts and we will transport up to Mars uh, and that will um, uh, conclude the tour. Before I do that, these ones here are worth, worth looking at. This is the ocean. Uh, is and why Einstein's involved. Yeah, Mars is one of my favorites, too. That's one of the ones which I was uh, first very impressed with the uh, scripting. Uh, anyone know about Brownian motion or how it relates to um, Einstein? Yes. In other words, uh, before the 1900s, people suspected there were atoms, but and molecules, but there really wasn't any proof of it. 
And so Brownian motion is an actual um, effect. You can, uh, with the right, uh, I'm trying to think of what uh, they use, but it's not something difficult. It's, it's something where you can actually see little particles moving around. Uh, I'll have to look it up, but the idea is you can actually see it visibly, uh, Brownian motion taking place. By the way, you can actually go into this exhibit and sit on one of those uh, objects there and become part of the exhibit yourself. It's kind of funny. But the, uh, well, that's, you know, uh, when you see things moving around inside liquid and such, that's um, some of the what's going on can be prescribed to Brownian motion. Now, the person who actually was able to, yes, Einstein published a paper on it, among other papers. He could have, there were so many papers published in 1905 in that one journal of the Annalen der Physik uh, that he could have easily gotten a Nobel Prize just on uh, Brownian motion, for example, because it was the first real proof of atoms. And that was where Einstein came in. He published a, uh, a paper on it. Uh, there's one more exhibit. Um, yes, that's exactly correct. That's what I was uh, uh, referring to. Yeah, it's, it's very laggy uh, because of all the uh, scripting. There's also, by the way, I don't know how many people here, but there's, when I look out, hey, there's quite a crowd, which is wonderful for today. Thank you all for coming. It's most cool. Uh, but this is a very important uh, place. And this one here also shows you um, how atoms moving around uh, can change path because of other uh, objects. In other words, visible objects can change path. But you can come back and read this. It's kind of cool. So we're actually kind of toward the end of... This was one of my favorites. Game. And it, what it does is it tests your memory. And it's not, it's not so much guessing is what you do is, uh, the last time I tried this, the script didn't work either, unfortunately. But what it did at one time was you tried, see, see how many balls there are? There's green balls and blue balls. By the way, this would not be difficult to, uh, yeah, memory test. This would not be difficult to reproduce either because it simply changes the color. And so randomly what it does is that when you click on it, see if it, see if it still works. I'm going to do here. Oh, there we go. Hey, maybe this works. Cool. Okay. So what I did was I clicked on three. It randomly picked three of the balls to, um, somebody picked on two. Now, it's, okay, we've got other people clicking. And what it did was when you press start, it moved them around. And then you had to, yeah, <laughs> it's moving them around. And then you had to actually follow the two or three or four or five balls. Hey, it works. Good. Okay, now what it's doing is it's going to take away the colors and you have to uh, remember where the balls are and then, and then click on them to see if they're correct. Yeah, this is fun. I used to, I used to play with this it's, uh, uh, quite a bit. And if you get it wrong, like somebody just did, it's red. And if you got it right, it's blue. <laughs> but it's very hard. Uh, I don't think I ever got the five ball. Somebody maybe has um, um, that good a memory. But actually following them around and then remembering which are which, really, really difficult. But, you know, come back. Four balls. Oh, boy. Have fun. Because they're going to move around. But uh, this is a, a kind of a fun one. I'm glad to see that the script is still working on it. Okay. Now that actually concludes, um, because we're kind of back where we started with the pie. And so we've walked around the entire region, but what we need to do is now I'm going to go over to the um, navigation bar here. There's several of them and click on the one that goes to Mars. So if anybody wants to follow me up there, we'll go there. And if the script still works, this should be uh, very nice. Find the one that has Mars, which I think is on the other side here. Yeah, there we go. It's in the middle. And when you click on it, I'm going to disappear, okay, because I'm going up to Mars. So you're going to...
Okay. It looks like we've got a few people. I hope everybody follows. There we go. Oh, other people here showing up. Yay. Okay. Good. Follow. Have a seat for a second. Grab a seat. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. I think there's still quite a few people down on the on the surface. <laughs> uh, do they still have the memorial? I'm not sure if they do up here, but it used to be right here in front. Uh, by the way, uh, in order to get back, you need to be able to get back to the surface. The um, uh, okay, the little green one controls the, there we go, another person. The green one controls the exhibit, which I'll do here in just a second. And then there is a navigation. Here we go. This is, Yeah, okay. So the one where I'm standing right here is how to get back to the surface. And then if we, yep, okay, it looks like we have uh, a good majority of people. Um, where are we right now? We're on the surface, is across the way. The memorial is across the way. Okay, so... Right now we are on the surface of Mars and NASA used to have, let me see if this is a NASA thing. NASA used to have a lot, oh, this was actually uh, built by uh, uh, someone and then owned by Patio. And this is a NASA rover. Um, there used to be uh, like the ones that are on Mars right now, the Curiosity one. And there used to be quite a few of those here. Okay, so let's see, let's see if the exhibit will actually work. I'm going to click the red one. If it if it what if it does work, watch because this used to be really spectacular. Watch what happens here. Let me see if this will work. Okay, let me see if it will do its thing. There used to be a there. Okay. Cool, huh? <laughs> Luckily, that wasn't big enough to um, wipe us out. You can actually go walking in the crater, too. It's kind of cool. Uh, and then we can reset it, but you can you can see what the crater would, would be like. Doo-doo-doo. It's pretty cool. Okay, now you're in a marsh crater that just was created. Yeah, you, you're in a Martian crater that was just created, isn't that there? Something you'll never hopefully witness in at least that close in your lifetime. <laughs> but what, what we'll have to do is reset the thing so that uh, I think it, I don't know if it resets automatically or whether somebody has to reset it, but uh, it's most cool. If you have not, by the way, and then I'll close up the tour, is if you have not gone over to the memorial uh, one of the geniuses behind here was uh, Patio Plasma, at least that's, or Paul Doherty in real life, Dr. Poor Paul Doherty. And he was a the chief scientist at the Exploratorium. Um, whoop, up the thing. And let's see, where is the memorial here? Doo -doo -doo. There it is over there. But uh, explore around, and then when you're ready to uh, leave here, just um, be sure to uh, go over to, yeah, okay. And that was the memorial to uh, Paul. But he was the one that did a lot of the, he owned most of the objects on the island. He did a lot of the scripting. Uh, we, the Science Circle has an award to him that you'll see online. So this is a good place to uh, end the tour. Yeah, very missed. And then again, 
uh, uh, remembered. And so this is the end of the tour. And so please take a, take time to look around, come back, uh, just sit and um, contemplate, try things. Uh, make sure that you get a good idea of what's going around because we may be able to reproduce some of these things if there's some that you like, particularly in mesh. Okay, I'll leave you here. Take care.
Okay, as in any tour, uh, it's always uh, fast paced and you always want to see more than <laughs> they show you and slow down. So uh, feel free, relax, <laughs> you know, come back, look around, uh, sit and feed the ducks, <laughs> any number of things. It's a good place to be and it's in the center of a lot of things that you might want to see. There's still some islands. This used to be a large area of about 25 or so islands called uh, Sylands. And this was somewhat in the center of it and so everyone knew about Exploratorium. But there's still some, there's still some left if you look at the map. And if genomes left, yeah, it was a, actually a mini continent. Uh, the, the old days. Um, I think we still have some, um, I was one of the Sylan senators is what they called them, people that owned the islands in this area. And yep, uh, they have sunk into the uh, Linden Sea. Okay, but there's still a lot to see in Second Life. Okay, so uh, if Genome Island is around, I'd love to uh, give a tour or to get uh, Max to show us the tour. That would be even best. I mean, it's her island, Chat Noir, um, who's a professor of biology. And it's got some incredible, if you have time and you want to look around, uh, transport over to Genome Island and take a look. It's all about the genetics and DNA and it's got some, uh, just like this island, it's got some magnificent um, examples. Uh, she still uses it for classes. Uh, it's got some great scripting examples, uh, interactive. That, ooh, that would be a, yes, she would be a perfect uh, uh, panel member. Good idea, good idea. That's why we're all here is so that we can share ideas and to uh, make this happen. This is a community, a science community, and we can't let um, this die. Second Life is a wonderful... Yeah, you know, there used to be a glacier. Noah used to have an island that actually had a, a glacier um, exhibit, and you, and, it, and you could see where the glacier was, and then you could have the glacier retreat. Um, Another cool place. Okay, well, I personally have to get back to um, first life, <laughs> but have fun. I'm glad I was able to show people around if you haven't uh, been here or even if you have.